weird. So weird. In this box is a vintage guitar. It's the VRBT72, a T style with a Jazzmaster trem system in Arctic white. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. Let's do a body reveal before the headstock reveal. Oh my goodness, never done this before. That is double bound goodness. Wow, that looks, that looks like it belongs in a palace. Headstock reveal. There it is in all its glory, the VRBT72AW. And first impressions are that it looks absolutely stunning. Um, let's pop that off there. Oh my goodness, there's, there's two switches. One, two, three, one, two, three. Please don't pull it. All right, okay, so none of that pops out, I think. But we have th two switches with three positions. I wonder how many combinations that gives. Seven? I think so. The neck is fairly similar to the other vintage guitars I've played. It's somewhere between modern C-ish with a bit more shoulder, a bit more grip on the edges. It's not as wide as like the, the S-type ones that vintage do. So that's, that's oh, it's, it feels a bit thicker up there. I wonder if that is the case. No, it's just my imagination. We're looking at an Akume body with a bolt-on maple neck, which is shiny, but not sticky. So I quite like that. It's somewhere in between satin and gloss, even though it is very shiny. And as for the fretboard, that is confusing because I couldn't find the specs anywhere on the fretboard. Yeah, it looks like rosewood by the grain, but it's a bit too red to be rosewood. If I find out what that is during the editing or something, I'll put it on screen to let you know. But so far, it, it looks like a red rosewood. We've got 22 frets. They are sort of medium vintage-y, and I can report that they are not sticking out or sharp in any way. As for the pickups, oh, they're kind of matte and, and kind of grippy. These are Allen Entwistle. Uh, they are P90s and they are J90As, they're called. We've got a roller bridge just there and this offset vintage trem system, which I really hope stays in tune because Jazzmaster style trem systems and I don't have a very good relationship. We've got, of course, electronically, two three-way switches, two tones and a volume. The neck is bound, as is the body, which is double bound, and the output jack is just down there. I am truly enamored by this bound body, although the binding on the neck and the body is not quite the same color. This one's a little bit darker. That's slightly odd, but it, no one's gonna notice that from a few feet away. As regards to the headstock, it is a smaller sort of telly style headstock. And we're looking at Vin, no, Wilkinson Easy Lock Tuners on those and, uh, and a Graph Tech Nut. What am I missing? Oh yeah, the Elixir string. So it's got some quality strings on there and it's available in three different colors. There's Honey Burst, Arctic White, and this sort of green yellow one. And I, I think they're all fantastically beautiful. This one looks super classy. Let's see if it's in tune. No, thankfully. Right, I'm gonna stretch out the strings, tune it up, and tell you how it felt to tune it. That was a delight to tune. Everything was just a little bit flat, as I'm expected. Uh, a little bit of creaking in the tuners, but that's where they haven't been moved in a while, I would guess. And the action is so flat, it might be too flat. And often these sort of bridges on Jazz Masters result in too high action, you have to shim the neck. Let's get some sounds, Fender Deluxe Reverb, clean, little bit of verb, and um, all of the pickup configurations, which I think is seven, but might be a hundred, somewhere between three and five hundred. <laughs> Um, I have a confession to make, and that is this is the second time I've tried to record this part of the video because I found out during my first attempt that my deluxe reverb amp is on the fritz. And then not only that, but this guitar genuinely confused me when I began playing it. Let's have a look at this switching system. This switching system <laughs> um, is not your regular Strat or Tele switching system. We have two three-way switches. Let's call this switch A. In this position, you're on the bridge pickup only. In this position, you're on the bridge pickup and the neck pickup. 
In this position, you're on the neck pickup only. Let's have a look at this switch, which we'll call switch B. In this position, it does nothing. In this position, it replaces whatever's going on on switch A with the middle pickup. So it doesn't matter where that is, if I put that bottom switch, switch B, in that position, you are on the middle pickup. But if you put it in the middle position, then you add the middle pickup to whatever's going on on this switch. So, so that would be bridge and middle. That would be all three together, and that would be neck and middle. So it makes absolute sense. It's just, it, it really freaked me out. And I sat here saying, I'm confused and speechless. Because every time I tried to do a, a sound sample, um, I, I didn't know what I was playing in terms of which setting I was on. Let's now talk about the tone knobs. Well, first the volume. This is a master volume for the guitar. And then you've got a tone knob here and a tone knob here. And you might assume that maybe this is the bridge tone knob and this is the tone knob for the neck in the middle. Oh no! They are both tone knobs for everything. This is the mid tone and that is just the tone. So if I, if it doesn't matter what I'm playing, if I, let's, let's go to the neck. If I play something, It affects everything, which blows my mind. It's something to do with Alan Entwistle, and Alan, if you're watching, I really like this, um, but it did confuse me. So I've had to go back and, and add that with a broken amp. I was in a world of pain. So we're now back pretty much at the beginning of the video, and I can show you some sound samples and then talk about the rest of the guitar. So let's run through the different pickups now that I know they're working. And um, this is going to be bridge, then bridge and neck, then neck, then middle, and then bridge and middle, neck and middle, all three together. I think. No, I know, I'm kidding. Right, here we go. I've seen that I still got confused and I've been playing the guitar for quite a while now um, and I've gone back and uh, gone away and come back. It sounds so much better through the katana than it did through the Fender so there's, there's definitely something wrong. The guitar is extremely bright and I think it might be good at funk so I'm gonna put a compressor on and see if it funks up. I think it will. Let's try the bridge pickup and the middle pickup together. And that's in parallel. It's not humbuckering it up as far as I can tell. It doesn't sound like it's humbuckering. And it sounds um, it sounds kind of out of phase, but it's, it's, it's great. Just the middle pickup. Mm -hmm. 
just the neck. Neck and bridge. That that's great. One thing I've noticed with the playing, it's absolutely gorgeous to play. Neck is is glossy but not sticky. Um the strings feel quite close together, and I'm having some issues getting these massive sausages in there. The action is super low, and I love the action being super low. The strings are quite slinky. I'm going to try and drive it up a little bit. Um, I've got. Dr Let's go drive from the Comart in Panama. <laughs> Great stuff with clean. As soon as I go into drives, it tends to fall apart, which I've never had happen ever. Let's try um, the Rattler, a Rat Star pedal. See if it does that. <laughs> There's a sound there that I like, this sort of scratchy, garagey, um, almost band that's in a commercial for some sort of sports drink or something. There's something there, this scratchiness, almost maybe some strokes sort of stuff. Let's try it. Uh, bridge position. <laughs> to say it i don't think this guitar does drive it feels like such a weird thing to say i'm going to give it one more time one more chance by going on the crunch channel of the katana which i know sounds great and try that <laughs> It's uninspiring to play crunch-wise. I've really never had it happen, so let's stick to some clean. And I, I don't think this is a bad guitar. I just think, I think it's voiced for clean. That's it's so weird. So weird. and the overdrive but this it's going with me it's it's like you know uh paddling against the tide rather than with the tide or against the wind i think it's gorgeous like that let's put the k-line drive on and see what that sounds like never played like this I've never said this on the channel before everything I, every time I put the pick to the strings I'm listening intently to what the guitar is going to do it's like suddenly being picked up and dropped in another land um, which has happened to me um, let's let's see if it does surf I think it might surf <laughs>
there you have it. If you need a guitar that surfs and stays in tune when you when you really go for it, this is it. If you need a guitar that drives and does all sort of weird stuff with distortion, this is not it. Um, I'm gonna try just try something middle-ish, like some some Hendrixy. Hang on. Sounds great. I'm having trouble getting the fingers in, in between the strings. Yeah, that's the problem. It's not because I can't play, it's the strings. I'm gonna open the guitar up and see what it looks like inside because I don't think I can say any more with regards to the sounds. It, it, it does clean, it does this light overdrive, but as soon as you kick it into anything higher, it all goes to pot. And I feel, don't think that this is a bad guitar. It's just for the first time ever, I have a guitar that is versatile, but only when it's clean. Let's have a look inside, see what's going on. Wow. Um, okay, I forgot that there were two switches inside. I suddenly wondered what that was. So we have one, two, three large pots that are branded with something. I don't know what that is. We've got a pretty standard budget, but acceptable and up to more than budget capacitor and one over there, but they're different values, which is, or they must, they're different colors, and I'm assuming they're different values because they do different things, um, different amounts to the to the tone. There's our volume, and then this is our switch for the double switches. Alan Entwistle is um, a bit of a mad scientist, and that is so interesting. I wonder if that is uh, conductive inside. Let's have a look. So that's on BPBP. BP. Beeping, not beeping. So just painted black for reasons. Okay, it's not conductive. Right, as I have the multimeter out, let's pop that back on and test the output of the pickups. This is gonna be super interesting. So bridge pickup is nine, nine kilo ohms roughly. Let's go for neck pickup. 8.1 and middle pickup, 8.8. .8. So there might be something wrong with this pickup. I can't tell you, but neck and bridge together is 4.6. So definitely not humbucking. And then we've got everything all together is 3.1, three. So the vintage trio, oh, hang on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's do it on camera. Oh yeah. That was very satisfying. The vintage trio. Um, trio because of the, the three pickups, I assume. Two of which I like, one of which I don't. It's such a confusing guitar because even though I don't think it sounds good with distortion and stuff, I still like it. I still recommend it. It's, it's, it sounds like nothing else I have in my collection and nothing else I've ever played. And some of you out there are gonna hate this guitar. Some of you are going to love it. And it's gonna be exactly what you're looking for. If you are into clean sounds and you want a really responsive trem that you can really wiggle up and down and keeps the guitar in tune and you wanna spend around 400 notes, 450, less than 500, this is doing it all. I, I, I truly am enamored by this guitar even though it's let me down in the overdrive and distortion stakes. I can't help but say, what an interesting guitar. It's light, it feels like a telly, but it feels like an expensive telly. And yeah, there's something about it that makes me, at the look, I mean, it's pretty much like something Jack White would play. And in fact, he, at the time of recording, he has a, guitar coming out with Fender. At time of release, it's probably out. So if you're watching this, yeah, the Fender Jack White has been released. So this kind of looks like that a little bit, like it could be its cheaper brother. Um, it just doesn't sound like it. Uh, so yeah, what a, what a weird, weird guitar. I can't help but love it. I'm gonna play another one. I'm gonna have to play another one to make sure this isn't uh, an anomaly. 
If I play another one and it sounds totally different, I'm going to remake this video. Uh, but until then, I hope you enjoyed the sound samples and understand the point that I'm trying to get to with all the, the downsides. The plus sides is everything else. Everything on this is spotless. I, I can't fault it, especially for the price. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to go looking, I'm going to find things that are, you know, weird. Um, like the binding is not quite the same color as on the body as the binding on the neck, which is kind of odd, but adds to the quirkiness. Everything on here, for the price that is has been asked for it, amazing. It's just it doesn't seem to do overdrive or distortion, or it does it, but not in the way that I want it to. There are links to this guitar in the video description and first comment, so go and check them out if you want more information, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!